What's up you guys, it's Taylor and Jeff. Welcome back to another video of us cooking, except this time we are in a brand new kitchen. No more hot plate, no more cooking on the dining table in the middle of our living room. Um, how do you feel, Chef? You know, I have to say, back by popular demand. I There's been a lot of people three. asking for three people. Mm -hmm. Asking for a resurgence of the cooking videos, the cooking content. which was started early quarantine. What are we cooking today? Today we are making one of our very favorite, super easy, whoa, meals. A one skillet chicken artichoke. marsala artichoke orzo dish from one of our favorite recipe people. We're very big orzo people. We it's are. been like a, a recent thing that we've been yeah. eating like a lot of. And when orzo I say, is, is pasta. Um, some may think it's rice. Um, yes. And when I say pasta. we've been eating a lot of it, it's been like every meal. Every meal. Anyway, so today, let's get into what we're making today and show off our new kitchen. Let's get to it. Take it away. All right, so first we're gonna sear some thinly sliced chicken cutlets. So, chef, if you wouldn't mind salt and peppering those babies. Great before we dredge them in some flour and garlic powder. I'm gonna wash my hands just for a second. You know what? I'm so happy you mentioned that. It's so important to wash our hands before dealing with poultry or meats or food that you're gonna eat. Okay, so I'll just start. Why do we like this meal so much? It has really good flavor. Yes. And um, it's like unique things that you normally wouldn't put together. Every day. You yeah. Know, like orzo for the average person, artichoke, garlic, marsala, shallot. If you'll take the flour, okay. we're gonna add one tablespoon of garlic powder just to give it a little cake. And that's good. Okay, oh. mix that Mix that with your cleanly washed hands. Spoony. Okay, I know how to mix. Add a little salt in there. To get it in the bowl. <laughs> I'll put some olive oil in the pan. This is like a healthy version of fried chicken. You know, you put a little bit of flour on it to give it that crunchy flavor. Yeah. But it's not fried chicken, but it's better than just grilled chicken breast day after day after day. Oh, what is that sound I hear? That's our new Z-Line stove. Yes. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> the stove, Mr. O'Donnell. My baby. My baby. I've named her Penelope. She's never let me down yet. She features seven burners. Seven burners. Actually, the whole entire cooktop is one piece, which is really great for cleaning, and it's like a, just one cast iron piece, which is really good. I think the burners go from 4,200 BTU up to 18,000. Anyway, so I breaded the chicken, all this flour. Now we're gonna cook the chicken. Okay. Uh, like two to three minutes, minutes each side. Then we're gonna add a little bit of butter just to make it creamy. Mm. And then we're gonna get into the fun part. The fun stuff. So while Jeff starts, I guess I'll go in and tell you about all the things you need for this recipe since we are a little bit ahead. But if you wanna do this yourself, we will link the recipe in the description, but I'll tell you right now what you need. You need chicken breasts, either chicken cutlets or chicken breasts, depending on which you use. You have more chicken cutlets, less chicken breasts, Salt, pepper, garlic powder, flour, olive oil, salted butter, shallot, chicken artichoke, broth. chicken broth, fresh thyme, crushed red pepper, and dry orzo pasta. Great. How are you chopping it? Just, you know, diced. We're gonna do half an onion as well because it's a small shallot. Got to take the skin off. So what's the difference between a shallot and an onion? Think of a shallot as kind of like half an onion, half a garlic. Oh, this whole onion? We'll do half of it. Oh, my eyes are... Really? Yep. Don't cry, baby. It's okay. Good. 
really having a hard time here. Oh my goodness. Are you supposed to like chew gum or something during yeah. this? Yeah. I need a piece of gum before I lose it. All right, so some more things about our stove that we love. Um, earlier I mentioned it was one solid piece. I, I think I actually said cast iron, it's actually enamel. Oh. Which is, I think, even better because that's even easier to clean. Seven burners, stainless steel knobs, which are very... Make two ovens. Make you feel very rich. Two ovens. Two ovens. A big one and a little one. A big one what do most people one. use the different ovens for? Well, You're like, the what? little one was good like yesterday when I just wanted to heat up that piece of pizza. <laughs> yes. And I didn't have to like turn the big oven on, you know? Right. It's good for like broiling because most likely you're broiling like a piece of fish or meat or something. Right. So you don't have to like... Can you like, you could you hypothetically like make a dessert and bake something like for dinner at the same time? Yeah. Nice. Should these stay separate? Um, nope, you can put them in together. Good to know. Okay, so the chicken's nearly done. We're gonna remove that. Okay. We're gonna add it to a plate and then we're gonna start adding in like our artichokes, our garlic, our seasonings, our stuff like orzo. that. Chicken's almost done. We'll take the chicken out and then we basically cook everything else together. And then you throw the chicken in. It's just like this one big soaking pot of Goodness. deliciousness. Yeah. Our butter is browning. Great. We're gonna wait one more minute. We're gonna add that to the chicken. I mean, we're gonna <laughs> remove the chicken. And then we are going to add the artichokes. Let the artichokes cook undisturbed for two minutes. Okay. okay. What kind of artichokes? From a container? Correct, like a marinated artichoke heart. Mm. Not to be confused with these full artichokes that we have over here, which are for grilling another dinner that we're grilling later. Yeah. Artichokes in. Love that sound. So in two minutes, after the artichokes have cooked by themselves, undisturbed, as Jeff likes to say, I will add the shallot, the onion, the garlic, and butter. And thyme, a pinch of red pepper, some salt and pepper. We, we usually make enough of dinners to have it the next night at least. For lunch at the minute. Oh, yeah. So we always make enough for at least two meals. And the first time we made this, I ate, I oh. think I ate our dinner. And then I ate my second dinner, and I believe your second dinner. It was so good. So you gotta try it. It feels so much different than when we when we used to film cooking videos. Which, if you haven't seen our old cooking videos, feel free to take a look right here and check those out. They're um, chaotic. They're chaotic because in our old apartment, we did not have a kitchen for cooking, period. Let alone entertaining people in real life or on camera. Yes. So we would bring our dining table into the living room and set up shop there. But now you're in like a, now I feel like we're in like a little studio. We are. Um, our own little studio. Okay, so how long has that been? Let's do 20 more seconds. Right. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for um, like three minutes or so. Great. We're also gonna add time. I feel like also if you're looking for, this meal is all obviously delicious and easy that it's all in one pot, but I feel like the time is not very, Yeah, no. doesn't take very long to do. You can also make it in advance. It's impressive. Yeah. And it's easy. Okay. We all so we're gonna strings. cook that for three minutes and then we're gonna add the orzo. Le orzo. So the purpose of doing this is we're essentially gonna like toast the orzo before we cook it. Yep, smells good. 
All right, so like another minute and then we'll have the orzo. We're adding the orzo. Anyone? I'm adding the orzo. Okay, here we go. I added the orzo. Everyone was curious. All right, so we got, you know, any oil and butter on the orzo so it can actually brown and toast. So we're gonna let that cook three minutes. Then we're gonna add some masala wine and some chicken broth and it's gonna cook the orzo and become juicy and puffy and that good good. And we're gonna add some cream, we're gonna eat. So ever since my mom came to visit, we got these Pepperoncinis. Jeff has been like obsessed with them. I grew up eating these because my parents own a pizza restaurant back in Indiana. Is this popular on pizza? Yeah, it comes on the side. Oh, like with the salad? No. It comes on the side in the corner of the box. Okay, guess what? It's time to add the cream. Nope. Guess again. Chicken broth. And? And the wine. Yep. Pro tip. We're gonna add the wine first, so it gets all the brown bits on the bottom of the pan up of and soaks in the flavor, and then we're gonna it add It is the Jeff's out. kitchen, and we are just living in it. Well, I mean, do you want the food to taste good, or? Dude, if people didn't already think I was mean, I would drag your ass right now. All right, all right. So this is how your dish should look right about now. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Thank you. I find, this is obviously fun and I'm very excited to eat it so I'm not complaining. I find baking more fun for video. Because there's way more to do and there's like way, we should do a nail, like a nailed it competition. You versus me? Yeah, in here. That'd be fun. The joy of baking is that like, you create the dough and you put it in and like you have no idea what it's gonna come out like. You know what I mean? Like it's like, I feel like... it's like a magic box. Mm, I feel like you know. It's transformative. You know? Okay, we're gonna cook this for like eight more minutes. Mm. The heck am I supposed to on camera for eight minutes? Oh, I wanna go downstairs. Taylor, I need you. Come back up here. Taylor! Oh, I took the dummy waiter. Oh, nice. Your favorite part? We're gonna add the cream. That's your favorite part. Go ahead. The whole thing? No. I don't. What? How much? Go in a circle and I'll tell you when to stop. Stop. So now we're just gonna add a little bit of lemon juice and then add the chicken back in so the chicken heats through. Yep. And then bone apple teeth. This whole thing? Yep. Oh, yep, just use your hands. Oh yeah, just sneaks right, right over the food. Oh. I can't wait to eat that. All right, and just like that, we're done. All right, so you heard the chef here, we are done. Great work. Was it, are you done? Yeah, <laughs> do you want more? Not it falling off the plate. Bone apple teeth. All right, mine's ugly because it slid off the table, but here is the finished. Cheers. I'm gonna get a little chicken because I don't enjoy. Now, isn't that just decadent? Mmm! It needs a little salt. I think it does need a little salt. 
But hey, we are not professionals, nor did we ever claim to be. Speak for yourself. All right, you guys, thanks for coming back. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming back to channel seven here. If you wanna make this recipe, which we suggest, it's really good. Yes. Um, we'll link it below. Yep. Let us know how it goes. Yep. Maybe add a little bit more salt and somewhere in your process, <laughs> that's our feedback, but like normally you would salt a little bit at the end as well. Right. Um, and that's that on that. And, and that's that on that. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment, and we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Bye.